I want to introduce you to Power Tools for Final Cut Pro. This is a set of plugins that I created to help me make YouTube videos faster, and I'm excited to show them to you. Right now, it's a set of over 20 effects, including power cuts, power tools, and power zooms, as well as a few effects for power moves and also power tool effects. I'm gonna go through all of them to show you what they do and how they can help you. We're gonna start with power cuts. These are adjustment layers that do essentially what they say. So we're gonna start with glitch and these are meant for jump cuts. So if you're editing something and there's a big jump cut that you want to hide. So instead of having to scale up the image, you can use these adjustment layers where you essentially, where you just place it over top and in the center. And this one is called power glitch and it just glitches the cut and you can make it faster or shorter depending on what works for you. And in this effect, you can actually change the direction of the glitch. You can also add chromatic aberrations and how much you want to add to it. You can add in a shake if you wanna shake it a little bit more. There's extra glitch and also a pixelate effect. So you can really ramp it up. And because it is an adjustment layer, you, you can actually stack these up together. You can extend them out to make it slower. So there's glitch. There's also a, there's also shake, which on the surface, it just does a quick shake. But I built these out to have a little bit extra. So you can really ramp it up. You can also choose where you want it to shake. But it also has a radial blur. And you can choose where that radial blur is. So you can actually move it to where the center of the shake happens, but also down at the bottom and kind of separate them and create unique little jump cuts. And again, you can just make it as short as you want. And you can turn off the radial blur and just have the shake. There's also a quick zoom in effect, which recreates a zoom in. You can also choose where you want the zoom in to happen. And this one works better when you're going from one clip to another. You just have to make sure that because it's an adjustment layer, you want to make sure that that it's half on one clip and half on the other, just like a transition. Let me make it a little bit shorter. And then we also have a wipe effect, which does a nice wipe. You can actually turn on the stroke for each of the lines. Each layer zooms in and blurs a little bit and then just covers that up. You can also change all the colors and also the angle of the transition. So you can build a transition with your colors, but then change the wipe angle. So that's wipe. And then we also have wipe reveal, which has a text layer that's embedded into it. So if you want to do a transition into another section, you can change the text here and you can make this look however you want. So if you have any kind of styles that you already pre-built, you can use that right here. It's a little too big. So all the functionality in Final Cut Pro is still there. It's gonna change it back to the default. You can also turn on a drop zone. So if you have a background that you want to use, like a color, you can change it out and use that as a drop zone. Or if you wanna change the background color, you can make it your default color. It just gives you a nice quick transition without having to try to build multiple things. And this one also gives you the ability to change the angle that you're working on. I find this one really handy when you're working between different sections and you just want a quick swipe to a new chapter or a new section. Then we have slide blur which does exactly what it says. It just slides, but you can also flip the direction. So if you, if you want to go left to right or right to left, it will do that for you. Simple, clean. And we also have something that I used on a recent video that I liked. And so I wanted to create an effect for it. And it's just a flicker effect where you flicker between it just flickers the opacity on and off. It's simple, but it's something that I use all the time just to create that dramatic effect. And because these are all adjustment layers, you can actually layer them all on top of each other. 
and create a unique transition. Because that's one thing you can't do with regular transitions. You can't stack them. So you can actually stack these together to create your own unique transition. And there's eight. And I'm gonna keep adding to them once I have new ones that I've built. So anytime I update it and add new transitions or tools into it, you will get that update. So that is power cuts, which is essentially for jump cuts. And you can also use the power cuts to animate stuff in. So if we wanted to animate in or just this logo, actually just grab both and then create new compound clip. So that way in the compound clip, we have the whole animation that comes in, but it only affects everything on the transparency. We can start stacking these on top of each other to create some really interesting effects. And it's, it is about combining to create your own look. The one thing with a lot of templates that I don't like is that you're kind of stuck with it. You can just change the font, but it's the look is there where this allows you to build many different variations. Then we have power zooms. Constant zoom is one of my favorite little handy tools. And it essentially does a Ken Burns effect and it just zooms into a specific section and just does a nice Ken Burns effect over that clip. I don't like the way Final Cut handles Ken Burns in app where it's literally locked to the duration of the clip, where sometimes I just wanna be able to cut back out of a clip. So it's cutting in and then I can just jump back without cutting that clip. So constant zoom is an updated version of Ken Burns. Then we have the quick zoom in, which does exactly what it says. You choose a section that you want to zoom into and It'll just punch in. It'll done do a nice ease in and ease out. You can choose quick, regular, or smooth. So if you do quick, it's more of an instant punch in. And if you do smooth, boop. It'll just slow it down. You can enable the in and out animations how you see fit. And you can also um, adjust the sharpness. And I find that this is actually really good. If you're doing screen shares, and you have a quick zoom into a specific sections. So say you want to zoom in onto this part and without the sharpen, you can see that it gets a little bit soft, but sharpen can bring back some of that detail. So it still looks really good. And this is a 4K scale up. So it still looks pretty good. So you can then go in and talk about very specific parts of the scene and that's on by default. And you can also crank it up a little bit if you want. The other power zoom is the magnify. So it does something similar to the previous one where it zooms in on a specific section, but this one you can zoom in independently. But you can, and something that I wasn't able to find in a lot of the other uh, zoom, the magnify effects is to be able to shift the footage. So you can shift the footage you can actually just choose where you want it to go. And then this has a little animation in and it'll just magnify that one section. And if you don't want a circle, you can actually make it a square or a squircle. You can adjust the stroke. You can turn it off. You can actually add a glow to the stroke. You can change the color. You can also, it also has sharpen as well. You can add more glow. We can turn that all off. You can turn off the stroke and the glow and make it a circle or a square. So it's just a tool, especially if you're doing uh, screen captures and you want to point out to very specific places. It has all those little options that I'm always looking for. So that's power zoom. So now we're going to move to power moves. So next is power moves. And this is a set of six effects that will move your image in different kinds of way. And we're going to start with power 3D window. So for instance, if I want to do a demo of the menu set or how I set up my camera and I record the menu, I like to have it where it's not full screen. I still want to be on screen. So if I'm holding the camera, I can do something. And for some reason, Final Cut doesn't allow you to manipulate an image in 3D space, only in 2D, unless you do 
a distort, but then you can't really anim animate it in. You can't do anything. You have to, you kind of have to fake it. So that's where Power 3D Window comes in. It's an effect that gives you the power to move these around, but also allows you to allows you to rotate the image and scale it up and down. It has all the functions, so you can actually crop it in. You can add in a border, but at the same time, because I don't like the black, I actually want people to focus just in on the menu. That's where you can go in and change the blend mode. So now the audience can focus in on just that, and it's a, and it's a really cool effect. But by itself, it doesn't animate in, it doesn't do anything, and that's where the next effect comes in. This is Pop Plus, so then we drop that on top. And the control allows you to choose where it pops in. So you can actually have it pop in from the center where it was, or we can have it pop out of my eye, or we can just pop out of the center of the image. So it just does a nice little pop and it has a pop in, pop out. We also have a thud, which is a lot harder. It just pops in and pops out. And it also has elastic which is a little bit more intense where it's like, bam, it, it's more like an elastic band. You can also add in a drop shadow, change the rotation of it, the opacity, the softness. And this is the effect that sparked this whole power tools where I'm like, where I just wanted to create all the effects in a way that I like to work. And that's where the next effect comes in. Like for instance, one of the effects that I use all the time in my videos is a slide. And this is just an effect that reveals what's behind it. So it does a nice smooth slide and crop of the image. But you, you can also just choose where you want that image to end and where you want the video to end. You can also scale into other parts. So if you're talking about a product, you can just grab the slide right. And this will reveal a split screen but you can choose where that split screen ends and where your footage is. You can also zoom in on your footage and just arrange it accordingly. And it has fast, regular, and slower. So we're just gonna do fast. And I'm gonna put in a slide left on the footage underneath. I'm just gonna match where the transition is. I'm just gonna move the footage. And you can start building multiple animations. So if you wanted this to happen here and and you had all your specs, you can actually just use those two effects. Got to make sure that they're both fast. And then you have a multiple split screen. You can also add a line, change the color of it. I'm going to add a line to both. And very quickly, you can build your own screens with a slide left, a slide right, or if you wanted to, you can slide it up and just add in any kind of graphics or specs underneath. And again, you can add in a line. You can choose where it ends and where the footage goes. So if you had multiple animations, it just reveals everything it just moves your footage out of the way in a split screen and there's slide up, slide down, slide right and slide left. So those are the moves. And next is power tools. And this is a free version that you can download by itself as a standalone. Um, and it comes with 3D perspective, pop and stroke plus. So if we wanted to do the same thing, we could do that here. We can just add in the 3D perspective. It gives you similar controls where you can you can recreate the power window, but there are no on-screen controls for it. And this is something that is readily available in Motion that I just brought over. So it's a free, free version of it, but I also added in the drop shadow. And then you can add in the stroke plus on top if you want to add in a stroke. I'm just gonna make the width. And then you can add in a glow to the stroke. You can also add in streaks to it as well for stroke plus. And these power tools are also available in the entire bundle. They come prepackaged in it. So if you if you get the full bundle has power cuts, power zooms, power moves, and also the power tools, which are effects and 
adjustment layers. Uh, there's also the adjustment layer for 3D perspectives. So say you built your design for your split screen, you can actually take the 3D perspective overlay and you can animate this by itself. So then it becomes its own effect and you can just make a compound clip of the entire thing. So it allows you to build an effect over a stack of other clips and then just make a compound clip and then you can just treat it as its own thing. So that's why I wanted to create a lot of these as title effects or adjustment layers where you can affect a whole group of images. So you can affect a whole group of layers in, in Final Cut Pro and it's stacking and it's about stacking all these effects on top of each other. And these are great if you have um, a graphic or a transparent animation. You can just grab Power Stroke Plus. It'll do a stroke around your graphic. You can change the, the stroke color or gradient. There's a lot of little tools in this. So you can actually just hide the source and have just the outline and mix between them. Or you can add in streaks. And it just does way more than the simple border effect that is built into Final Cut Pro. And we can just add in the pop right on top of that. That way. So if you have a graphic and you just want to move it around, you can actually change where the pop comes from. So that's an animation. But if you had a still, so this is just a PNG and we can add a stroke to this as well. You can also add in the 3D perspective, add in a pop effect for a 2D image. And this stroke is just better than the symbol border that's built into Final Cut Pro. And one last effect that is something that I use all the time and it's a simple, simple effect. And this is called power isolate. And all it does is you put it over top of your footage. You select a portion of the screen you want to isolate and then you turn it on and it just isolates that portion. And this is fantastic for checking to make sure that your skin tones, your color is correct. So in this case, I'm trying to check the skin tones of the face, but I can also move it up to a portion of the frame that I know needs to be white balanced. So I can check that and that's all it does. And it just allows me to do it faster over the entire image instead of where the other way to do it is to add a crop. So if I wanted to check the skin tones, I'd have to go here and just select that. But then I have footage that's underneath. So then I would have to go in and turn off that image, but then there's another piece of footage underneath and only now can I see the skin tone? I'd, I had to do multiple steps just to be able to check the skin tone for that one clip. Whereas I, if I had that all turned on, I can just take power isolate, drag it over top, move it to exactly where I want it, turn it on and then scale it down or up. Now I'm able to check the skin tones, just click on the layer and adjust the skin tones to make sure that they're on the skin tone indicator. And because I know I have this turned on, I can just disable it move it to another clip and just use it as a tool to double check everything that I'm trying to work on. And if you do pick up the bundle, it actually comes with some bonus material, some grunge background, a lighter grunge background and a noise background that I use in my videos all the time. A whole bunch of sound effects that I use that are fantastic. You got the beep. You got different swooshes and a pop. You get an extra $20 worth of bonus material that is included in the bundle for Power Tools for Final Cut Pro. So that is version one of Power Tools for Final Cut Pro. These are the tools that I build because these are the things that I use in my videos all the time. So if you like the way that my videos look and the way that stuff animates, make sure you check out Power Tools version one. And if there are any updates moving forward, if you buy the full package, you'll get those updates as they come out. If you do pick up Power Tools, let me know what you think, what I should add. And as always, thank you so much for supporting my channel and the things that I do. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.